morning. It's Monday, July 22nd. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition of Wex Wake Up. I'm Natasha Sweet. President Joe Biden finally heeded the advice of nearly 40 Democratic lawmakers, voters and private donors and suspended his reelection campaign. Biden stayed in the race even after months of signs showing his physical fitness and mental faculties were in decline. The president endorsed Vice President Kamala Harris. Shortly after, the Democratic Party reportedly raised over $27 million to endorse Harris as the party's presidential nominee. All 50 Democratic Party U.S. chairs offered their full support. Former President Barack Obama commended Biden but has yet to endorse Harris. With Biden dropping out, we asked people at the Trump rally who they wanted to see as the Democratic nominee. You know, I think it doesn't matter who runs against President Trump, they're going to lose. Like, this is, like, losing is not an option right now. And as you can see, at every Trump rally all across the country, he packs stadiums. There's people for miles. There's no other person in America that can pull those crowds. So it really, quite frankly, it doesn't matter who he runs against. They're going to be defeated. So I suggest they all step down because nobody wants that, you know, nobody wants that reputation to, to fall to such a great man. I don't think it matters. I mean, there's lots of options out there. None of them are good options for the Democrats, and they all seem to know it, have accepted that, even though they won't say it. But they don't have an option. They don't have a good dog in the fight against Trump. Trump's got the momentum. He's got the people. He's got everything in his favor right now. I think that the people voted for Joe Biden. I think democracy is, you gotta go with the people. So, I mean, it's up to them though, you know. In an open delegation, people can still technically vote for Biden, but it's unlikely. And after Trump's near-death experience last Saturday, many are wondering if the security of these future events like rallies will forever change. Earlier, I spoke with a retired San Diego police officer to get an inside look. You worked closely with the Secret Service when Obama was president during a private donor event um, in the affluent town of La Jolla. So tell us what your role was working with the Secret Service as a local police officer. Sure. Well, uh, when I was with San Diego PD, basically we I was assigned to be the radio communication for the snipers that were positioned on the the west end of the of the venue that was overlooking a, a very extensive canyon. This past Saturday, we saw Trump and Vance. They had their first rally together, but it was inside versus outside. When you hold a an event inside, the you have more control over the over the activity that's uh, that's taking place. When Trump did have that assassination attempt on his life, there were a lot of questions that people had because you heard about local law enforcement interacting with the suspects and them communicating with Secret Service. So when you were a local officer in charge of, you know, the, the safety of, you know, then President Obama, how did your interactions occur with Secret Service? I do remember that they were monitoring the frequency that we were on so they would have had an immediate response. Well, thank you so much for joining us on this Monday morning. For more stories, be sure to head on over to our website and give us a follow on social media so you can stay in the know and all that's trending in politics. Have a great day.